Hello everyone, it's Mr. Christie, here with a question from a stats paper uh, involving integration. Now you might ask, how could they ask a question on integration, which is a pure topic in statistics? Well, within the Edexcel spec, anything in pure is assumed knowledge for stats. So they could ask, not really everything, but certain topics could turn up in a stats paper that it that is pure content. Now, if you're interested in knowing what kind of questions they could ask potentially, just send me an email or leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back and maybe make a video on possible applications of pure content within the stats module. Okay. Um, now, if I'm gonna do this question, first of all, I need to recognize uh, what kind of integration technique I need to use. Now, I can see I've got the product to two functions. And they don't really have any relationship with each other. What I mean by that is the derivative of one is not a scalar multiple of the other. That would be reverse chain rule method. Uh, and so I know immediately that I should be using integration by parts. Now the integration by parts formula, which is given to you in the formula booklet, is the integral of u v prime dx, dv dx if you want, if you will, equals u v minus the integral of v u prime dx. Now one common issue students have when they're doing by parts is recognizing which thing is, which of the functions is their u and which one is their v prime. Now I've got an old school technique that I learned when I was in school um, called ilate. Okay, and in fact we don't actually need to use i anymore unless you're a further mathematician. I'm just going to quickly write down what this means. You have inverse trig, which by the way is not in the A-level maths spec anymore in, in, in the sense that we don't need to be able to integrate it, like arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. Um, but it is in further maths. You've got logs, we've got algebra, we've got trig, and we've got exponentials. Now, what you want to recognize here is whichever function comes first in this from left to right is going to be your u. So I know in this question I've got algebra, I've got x, and I've got exponential. And because algebra, algebra comes before exponential, my u is going to be x, and my v prime is going to be equal to e to the x. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work out u prime, I'm going to differentiate, and I'm going to work out v by integrating. Now, u prime is 1, and the integral of e to the x, in fact, it's not e to the x, it's e to the minus x. I differentiate the power, minus 1, and I divide by it. And I can do that because that's linear, so I don't need to do anything. Well, if it wasn't the case, we wouldn't be able to integrate it. Um, and that would be minus e to the minus x. And so what I'm going to do now is the product of these two, uv, minus the integral of this one. So let's call this original, in fact, before I continue, before I start writing things down, I'm actually going to ignore the limits, and that's a bit of advice that I would give. You can ignore the limits, basically do the indefinite integral, and then substitute the limits in later. That makes things a slightly bit easier, in my opinion. So um, the integral I'm going to consider is the integral of x e to the minus x with respect to x. So no limits at the moment. And I'm going to get the product of these two, which is minus x e to the minus x, minus the integral of 1 times minus e to the minus x. So 1 times minus e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x. So we minus the integral of minus e to the minus x dx. But what I could do, of course, is I you know, take out that minus. Let's just do that and put a plus sign there. And now I can evaluate this. That's going to be minus x e to the minus x plus, and the integral of e to the minus x, again, differentiate the power and divide by it because it's linear. That would be minus 1. I divide by that. That's going to give me minus e to the minus x, and then a plus c. Now, of course, I'm going to ignore that plus c when I do the definite integral. Okay, let's pause there for a second. Okay, let's carry on. Um, as you can see, I've written the integral up here. We've got more space now. And now what I'm going to do is substitute in the limits. So the original integral, which is a definite integral between 0 and n of x e to the minus x with respect to x, I'm going to have this minus x 
e to the minus x minus e to the minus x. Forget about the plus c. As you should know, with definite integration, we don't have a constant of integration. Or we essentially just get, we lose it. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to substitute in the limits. And remember, I'm trying to show this. I'm trying to get this. Let's plug in what we have. I'm going to get minus n e to the minus n minus e to the minus n subtract and then i'm going to plug in zero that'll be minus zero e to the zero minus e to the zero what's that going to give me well first of all i get minus n e to the minus n minus e to the minus n this is zero because zero multiplied by one e to the zero is one is just going to be zero and i'm going to get minus one but i get minus minus one which is plus one before I continue, I need to make sure I get it in the form that they want. That plus one is going to come to the front, as you can see over there. And then I can see that they factorized out the minus and the e to the minus n. So I'm going to do that over here. So I'm going to take out minus e to the minus n. And then I'm going to get n plus one. Now, multiplication is commutative. That means that I can just reorder this product, this multiplication. So that I can get it in that form, 1 minus n plus 1 e to the minus n. And there we go. That's the answer. Now, very briefly, you might ask, how can they ask something like this in a stats paper? Well, remember that definite integration, as long as the curve is above the x-axis, well, the value that you get will represent the area. And so it can have some, it can have some uh, useful applications within stats right so if the area is given by a definite integral in this situation well then we can link it to things like probability distributions uh, for example where the area under bounded by the curve and the x-axis is one right you know, already know one by the way so if i think about this the one that you know which by the way you don't need to integrate for is the normal distribution you know that the area bounded by this curve and the x-axis is one that's a probability a continuous probability distribution that you've dealt with so one application could be that, that they could link it to probability. Um, another application could be to do with frequency. So uh, if you think about like a, so let me just write that down. So it could be, could have possible applications. Let me try and fit this in. Possible applications to probability. And another thing it could have um, application to is if you think about histograms, the area for a histogram represents frequency or is proportional to frequency. So you could have a, instead of a histogram with a bunch of basically bars, we could have a curve where the area is also proportional or equal to frequency. So it could also be linked to frequency. And yeah, um, and if there are any other ones, let me know. Um, I can add that in. Thank you.